Hello, and welcome back to Warrior Land 3. I hope you're not too over the moon about watching what's surely your favorite Let's Play, because this is definitely your favorite Let's Play by Chaboy, me. Uh, because that's me, Chaboy. And, but you shouldn't be too over the moon, because we're only above the clouds. Like, every intro can't be a winner, okay? Um, we, last time we went beneath the waves. Uh, not beneath the waves, though. We got the Grab Your Gloves, our final power-up, which our grabbier gloves and the grabby gloves, we can now carry heavier enemies. Uh, we finished up the Tower of Revival, which gave us access to Above the Clouds, what could potentially be your final level that you are playing, unlocking, etc, etc. Uh, but in our case, once again, we are savoring, savoring, savoring the Forest of Fear and its friend, because the Forest of Fear has a friend which will end up being the last level we unlock. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, what you should instead actually be looking at instead though is this level above the clouds because we are here so above the clouds is a level that i very much so enjoy the aesthetic of because it's like oh boy you know a sky level those those are always just kind of a treat like to go have a fun time in the sky and the nighttime theme is very you know just soothing and relaxing it's it's, it's a good little theme and um, it's not bad not not great but it's it's a nice little relaxing thing i enjoy it um but it's not a great level and it's not one of my favorites uh the reason being is it's kind of plagued by a similar problem to the Tower of Revival, and to a lesser extent the um, the Castle of Illusions, uh, in which it has a large platforming se section that kind of divvies up the level. Uh, so to make any progress, you have to kind of traverse the same uh, platforming section again and again, um, which kind of sucks, uh, and is kind of, I guess, the inherent flaw with this kind of game design where there's no immediate fail state, and the only way to uh, punish a player is with, um, like, soft punishments that kind of consume your time, and ooh, that could have been a lot worse than it was. Uh, these, these slimes were very annoying enemies to stick in this area. Um, and I have a feeling that this was probably designed in this way uh, to make it a difficult level, since it's uh, potentially uh, your, your final level, not the final level you'll ever play. Um, I mean, I guess it could be. Um, I mean, it's very non-linear, so whatever. Uh, but it's the last level you unlock, so it's the most difficult. So they make it the most difficult by, I guess, making it the most annoying, which is kind of a flaw with this kind of uh, game design style section. I mean, granted, you could boil down to every game design, uh, or every fail state for a game being uh, it's a failure that's just going to take up your time and make you have to play a little bit longer than you previously would. Um, but hey, that's maybe boiling it down a little too far. Um, that was our green prismatic crown, our sixth prismatic crown, actually our sixth one this time. I didn't, didn't fix my notes, because it says that it's our seventh and last one, um, but I remember. I remember everything. And you know what I do remember? I do remember we don't need to play golf now. What a treat for all of us, not having to play golf. It's just a, it's a fun little treat for me to you, not having to play golf. You're welcome. Um, so yes, I said the night theme was kind of a plus for this level, not that it's like, you know, some super, like, great theme, but it's a nice little relaxing one. This day one, not so much. Um, not that it's a bad theme by any regards, um, but it has that kind of very Wario-y, uh, fart kazoo? Like, I don't know how to put it, it's a very high-pitched beep on this Game Boy. Um, uh, it's not an enjoyable thing to listen to in long solo segments like it's getting in this song, and oops, that was just bad all around. Um, so these little, like, disappearing and reappearing platforms, they're not too tough. Uh, they can make your life uh, pretty bad, though, um, as you're probably about to see, because uh, we have some platforming to do. Um, they're pretty predictable since they uh, appear on a very set pattern, and it, they're not a rough pattern at all. You get plenty of time uh, on both uh, both sides of the platform, and even whenever they're transitioning between each other, there's kind of like a spot where you can land on them, and it's just fine. This platform right here is very rude, since it looks like the disappearing and reappearing platforms, but is actually, in fact, something you could stand on. Um, I'm just going to see if I can get a better cycle with a spark here, so we can get by it without any trouble at all, which is nice. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can kind of end up spending a lot of time in this level, uh, just because, like, uh, if you fall with it being so vertically oriented, you're going to have to repeat a lot of it. Like... It has the closest thing to checkpoints uh, in having these kind of screen transitions. Um, but you see, if you get a little too jump happy, uh, because your brain forgets that there's, you know, disappearing or reappearing platforms, um, because I guess your brain just doesn't work good, but we, we know this, etc., etc. I've said it before. Um, you know, 
you can end up repeating a lot of this level, especially since there are segments where we could uh, fall uh, from here and fall straight into the screen below and then potentially fall past that and then have to go do more stuff and that could end up being bad for everybody. I'm not sure if this is the right door. I don't think this is the right door at all. Um, but hey, we'll, I guess, check it out and see where it goes because I have no idea. Um, these little uh, beam robots are going to make it a little, little difficult to get through here. Um, yeah, we're not going to be able to progress any farther, because um, as you can see, there's a block in our way, and I would have known that had I gone a bit to the right. Um, luckily, oops, I didn't want to go up, I was just holding up on the D-pad to get a higher jump. Uh, luckily, the um, disappearing platform actually starts uh, beneath us, so that was convenient. Putting the disappearing platforms be uh, behind, uh, beneath the doors is probably a bit rude. By probably, I mean incredibly rude. I don't like that. That's that's just mean. Just just let me have the door. I've earned it. I've earned that door. You can't take it away from me. Um, I suppose we... Actually, what the heck is up here? Um, I don't know why you'd want to go up there. There's not really much reason to, because we can very easily jump up and grab that robot. And I don't think you would be able to even come here and do any of this stuff before you get the... Uh, I almost said the high jump, like this is Super Metroid. Uh, but the... Um, the big jump. The jumbo jump. The jumping boots, whatever you want to call them. And actually, how do we progress? Oh, I guess we have to go back now. I was like, how do we progress from here? But I had just seen the door that takes us to the area that we'd probably want to be in. Uh, luckily, my uh, kind of rash, just blind jumps weren't getting us kicked. Well, I mean, not that any jump in this game, or anything we can do in this game, with one exception, can get us killed. Um, but luckily, it didn't go bad. I didn't fall, like, super far, and then have to go, ooh, and then do a jump cut, and then everybody laughs at my expense, and we all have a good time, really. Um, and nobody, nobody, nobody has a bad time, because, well, I mean, I ha I'll have a bad time, but that's part of the, par part of the charm sometimes, is when, when a Let's Player has a bad time, they go, ooh, and then do a funny cut, and then they're somewhere else. I feel like I was kind of lampooning it there, but I had... Honest to God, no, I've done that before. I feel like I literally did that in the last episode with those stupid, um, uh, what level was it even? Um, I wanted to say it was the Peaceful Village, but it very much so wasn't. Um, was that a town in chaos? Where, where the heck even were we? I don't even remember what stupid level that was. And I feel like I did it last time. Did I do it last time? God, now I'm looking at the... The episode list. I have no idea whenever the hell that happened. There was there was some bats and there was there's was, there was keys and there was coins I had to get. It was it was probably the town of chaos. I don't know. It was definitely the town of chaos. I'm just gonna say that and stick with it. Um, and that kind of just general confusion um, took me it took my mind off of the fact that we had to uh, backtrack once again because um, we had to come to this area first to unlock this area and open up the thing to get the key. Then we have to come over here, jump down to get the key, and then we can come over here. To get the red chest, uh, just kind of kind of annoying. Uh, not that generally, uh, I feel like backtracking is a thing that that uh, that gets a very bad rap in video games. Uh, but video games also do have a tendency to use backtracking in very annoying ways. Uh, that being a, I feel pretty prime example of annoying backtracking. Um, even if it's just you know a small amount, that doesn't mean that it's any less annoying than it was. Um, but hey, what did we get? But the fire dowser! It's actually the dowser of flames. I messed it up. I'm, I'm stupid. I was gonna say, oh, you think we got a fire extinguisher? No, it's actually the dowser of flames. Uh, but I but I goofed that one up because my brain went super bad while we were in uh, Above the Clouds. So we're going to leave Above the Clouds and do a level um, that I guess I dislike for different reasons. The East Crater. I dislike it, uh, like I mentioned last time because uh, the just kind of general aesthetic doesn't doesn't uh, jive with me very well, just since it's basically it's basically the West Crater. There's not much difference there, and I don't think we're going to get... Yeah, I didn't think we were going to get that barrel through. Uh, I thought I'd try. It was a, a noble effort, but it was a flawed effort in the end, and I actually don't 100% remember where I'm trying to get to. I think it might actually just be beyond here. I think there's a... Uh, screen transition of some sort, and uh, luckily for us, I didn't break all the blocks, so these pneumos don't have a very uh, hard punishment for us at all. And, oh, there's a barrel right here. I thought I was going to have to bring a barrel all the way here, but it did not seem that was the case. Um, is this where we want to be? I, I don't think so. I think, uh, nope, that's where, that's a green chest. That is not a red chest, because I believe we're on the red chest for this level. I don't think we've done more than one, and oop, I'm going to need another barrel. Uh, once again, luckily for us, 
Blocks here, Numo can't... The Numos can't bring us down because when they sting you, they bring you up! What little silly is trying to bring us down? Uh, it's just against their nature, and we're just gonna go ahead and take care of this guy, but also, I guess, kill our, our beloved Barrel in the process. Uh, once again, taking out everybody's favorite Warrior Land 3 character, the Barrel, and that Barrel got uh, some rebound on it. It was very interesting. Um, very interesting in the way that I won't remember that it happened in a couple seconds from now, um, but very interesting that it just happened, and we can enjoy it for the moment, even if none of us will remember that event occurred uh, within... What, what are we talking about? I don't know. I'm just burning this Prince Froggy slash Lump, depending on which uh, name you accept this canon. When, I guess both names are technically canon. It's just, I guess, what you'd prefer at some point. Um, yeah, this is definitely where we want to be, because we have our friend, the Fire Breathing Snake, who we can ground pound and make go back in his thing, because we do not desire his help just yet, because we have a more immediate pressing issue. We need an enemy to throw up those eggs breakable blocks and we also have no desire to mess around with this uh arrangement because it's just it's not worth our time there's probably some musical coin or something we don't care about musical coins or some things right now what's all the rage right now is getting enemies and getting them to go where you desire and not be stuck in that little stupid little crevice instead to make it all the way through there um so we can get through and actually continue to not be able to get to where i want since this stupid block's not broken um, I guess we can just turn around at this point. Um, boy, it's gonna suck, because now we're gonna have to come back here and grab an enemy? Are we gonna have to do that? We might have to do that. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know how this video game works, I just play it, and sometimes things work out well in my favor. That's just, this is the general consensus. Um, oh no, since we can actually come over here now, we don't have to worry about it, because we can just go ahead and scoot through there, and then come back here and get an enemy, and everything's good, everything's great. Like I said, you just play this video game and things go great. Anyone can let's play this game. Even even me, apparently. It's it's that good. I put my seal of approval on it. E even I can let's play it. And uh, the enemy has not despawned yet, which is great. Because we are going to need his help. This little Paragoom can break these blocks for us. But not these. Paragoom can't break those. We can't light the Paragoom on fire. There's no animation for that whatsoever. So we're just going to allow our good friend, the snake, to light us on fire. Uh, which we'll, I guess, then use to break the fire blocks and um, just be on our way. Um, although, we have to do just a small amount of platforming, which uh, almost didn't work out in my favor there. Uh, but in the end, it all went well. Uh, we got a red chest, and everything is good. Um, so yeah, like, I I dislike the east and west crater just because aesthetically they are the same level. So it's just kind of like, uh, you know, it's not all that creative. It's, it's kind of hard to enjoy, but... Like, that wasn't a bad arrangement, like, especially compared to, like, the that red chest we had in Above the Clouds, that was much better. Also, this is the Crest of Diamonds, kind of hard to tell. Like, honestly, I would have... When I saw that, I was like, is that some kind of vase? I had to actually look over at my notes to be able to tell what the hell the thing was, because I was like, I don't remember there being, like, some kind of, like, big, stupid blue vase. Um, but no, it was the Crest of Diamonds. Ooh, so fancy. Um, so the Dowser of Flames puts out flames and both of the Volcano Craters. Quite a powerful dowser of flames and not a fire extinguisher or fire dowser as i said earlier like what the hell's a fire dowser fire dowser is nothing there's nothing called a fire dowser uh but there is something called a dowser of flames and there is such thing as a fire extinguisher um i was just praising the um the east crater for having a kind of a level arrangement i thought was interesting but uh this room kind of sticks out in my mind because it's just kind of a big dumb platforming challenge uh not to say that, you know, like, oh, platforming is bad or anything, um, even though that's probably starting to come off as the general consensus after Above the Clouds. Um, just if you were to, I guess, just string together my thoughts and trying to make them more coherent, coherent, it might seem that way. Um, this is just kind of like a weird, haphazardly thrown together, like, platforming segment with, like, just kind of, like, uh, I'm not going to say, like, pixel perfect or anything, but, like, one block wide jumps. Like, those aren't too hard to make in this game, uh, but it just seems very uh, amateur in its construction. Uh, like, I mean, I guess you could maybe take a look at it, and if you thought about it more than I have, maybe, like, like somebody smarter than I am who's willing to think more about it might be able to see some kind of semblance of, like, the thought process and design happening in this little platforming segment. But to me, it feels real, like, inane, like, hey, let's just put some blocks around and just... Let's, let's make them jump, and they better jump good, because the jumps are very 
uh, you know, very specific to make. Not that they're, like, you know, the hardest jumps in the world to make or anything, once again, but hey, come on. Uh, this, this just area feels very weird and slapdash, uh, in my opinion, but hey. Still not as bad as that above the clouds guy, am I right? Yeah, like, we're... Whew. Like, I came into this, like, thinking, like, oh, wait, you know, I don't dislike above the clouds as much as... As much as I think I do. Um, but then, like, the more and more I think about it, like, above the clouds? Yeah, I wasn't I, I wasn't feeling that all that much. Which is a shame, because I am a big fan of, like, like, hey, it's sky time, idiots. Uh, time to go to the sky and have a fun, good time. But, you know, I didn't have that good or fun of a time in above the clouds. Uh, which, is, you know, is a shame, because it's a fun little level. And we got a, got a brick. We got a brick, I guess? Like, what the hell? That It's a brick. Um, it's not just a brick, though. I was, I was, that, was, that was one of my classic goofs there, making you think that was just a brick. Because it's not just a brick, it's a missing pathway! We can now go to places we couldn't in the Castle of Illusion, because it was missing a pathway. Thanks, Brick. I, I enjoy your presence, and you have made the game more accessible to us, because now... We can go to the Castle of Illusions, which we can use this treasure that I never use. I believe this uh, the treasure that gave us this ability was the Detective's Companion. I think that's what I called it. Maybe I called it the Detective's Buddy. Can't remember. Uh, not very smart. But we can come here for the last time in the Castle of Illusions, which uh, we'll go ahead and tackle at night because I feel like it's been a while since we've been here at night. I feel like we came here the first time we unlocked this at night since I feel like uh, this place was still locked into Eternal Night uh, when we first unlocked it. And then we haven't come here since, since uh, we needed the help of these zombies to be able to make uh, more progress. And I should probably go ahead and grab this coin while I was here, um, because this is our last time here. So we need to grab all the coins we have available to us. Uh, and I'm hoping I didn't do a bad thing by coming here at night. Um, in my notes, it does not say that we need to come here at night or day specifically. Uh, so I was hoping we can come here at night just to get a little bit of variation in uh, what times we see each level in. Um, luckily for us, I don't think this level has too difficult of, a uh, of coins to collect. In fact, I think, like, five of them are kind of bunched together in one big area off to the, the right of the level. Um, which I think, if we jump down here, yeah, we can come down here and we can grab this, uh, Burbear, break these enemy blocks, and can continue down here. Um, a little shortcut you can make so you don't have to go all the way back up. Now, there is a coin hidden something. Yeah, there's one coin, and I think there might be actually two hidden in this area. Uh, just because it's a very strange thing where they decide to hide uh, uh, coins in the foreground. Uh, and we are definitely going to have to go back up there uh, via the left side and do a little platforming and get over there. Because uh, it'd be too easy were they to give us a, um, <clears throat> a ladder on either side of this platform so we could continue up at our leisure. Um, and that must have been a key since I think only keys pause the screen uh, and coins just make a little uh, make a little jingle for us. Uh, so we already have three out of eight keys, or coins, uh, we have keys, we have coins, not keys, uh, my bad, my brain, my brain, it, it's, it's not, not so good, we're, we're aware, and, uh, I actually didn't know there were spikes up there, um, cause you don't ever really need to go up there, um, I don't think, uh, cause yeah, we can't even, uh, take that enemy, um, to get a coin that you, actually, I think we might be able to, I'm, I'm gonna put you down, I'm gonna see if you can help me out, little buddy, cause what I want him to do is I want him to knock me over here, so I want to see... No, you bounced too far. Because um, there is a coin that you could potentially get if you went far enough off to the right. Um, but thanks to uh, the way we bounce, I think we might bounce right past it if we try to do it normally. Uh, so what I am going to do, because I don't know any other way to get to that coin, is we're going to take our hammer robot friend and knock him into a space where I can pick him up, break this block. And we're going to take him on a little ride with us, because now that we have... The Jumbo Jump and the Grab Your Gloves. We can take anything anywhere. No one can stop us. Because what I wanted to do is I wanted to get Spring Wario in here so we could come and grab this coin. And everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be fine. And we'll continue onwards. And I would like to go all the way up. But I believe that we need to... Yeah, we need to hit a switch to be able to activate these um uh, blocks that aren't accessible now. Uh, to be able to continue onwards. Um, although I do think we should check out the other side so yeah let's go grab our robot friend who should be back here and we'll continue on to the right part uh the rightmost part of that room uh because the rightmost part of the room is a section that you don't go to 
or you don't have any reason to go to, I should say. So it seems like a prime location for a coin. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's a coin in there, especially with the kind of logic of like, hey, why the hell would you ever come back up here? Um, and it was a good thing we did, uh, because blocks would have stopped us. I don't know where all the coins are in the game, but I had a, a pretty damn good feeling there was one up there, because it was, it was mm, prime coin location. You know, like, you don't need to go up there. Um, they have a block there that would, would have stopped us, and I don't care if he hits us all that much, since, you know, there's no punishment, we don't lose any spoils, and even if we did, I've had 999 coins pretty much forever, and... Because we haven't had to play golf in a hot second, I don't think. Like, when was the last time we had to play golf? Um, I'd have to scroll up my notes to be able to see that. Uh, and I didn't know, you know, I don't really feel like going too far out of my way to figure out the last time we had to play a good old round of... Of, um... I was just trying to remember if people call golf the king's sport. Because I know people call, like, bowling the king's sport. And it feels like the king's sport's just a thing that you slap onto any, like, sport that, like, I guess... Like, you could assume a dad would play. Um, but I don't think people actually call golf the king's sport, which is good, because what is golf but lame hockey? I ask you. Nobody fights. You don't even get to slip and slide across the cold water. And it's just it's just not a good time at all. And we should have about four coins, right? Oh, oh six coins! That's way more than I thought we had. That's very, very good. Um, which means we're actually good to go ahead and progress to the end of the level. The Castle of Illusions... Not that rough of a level to actually complete and get all the coins for. Um, especially when you think of, like, what we had to do in, like, the Tower of Revival or just the kind of bad stuff that happened in a town of chaos. I think that... I'm pretty sure that was the level where where the stupid, like, fat donut blocks happened and then I didn't break them all and it was a sad time. And I did the ooh cut, you know, when I had a bad time and the Let's Player goes ooh and you laugh at them and you have a good time but they're not having a good time. Yeah. Um, but now we can come in here and come finish this level, because I think we uh, continue through this area to get the blue coin. And um, we can hear that good hooten of our good hooten friend, um, the owl. And I got confused there for a second, because I said hooten, because, uh, you know, it's an owl and it hoots. But I also have a D&D &D character who is an owl named Hooten Thunderfluff, and I said Hooten, and I was like, wait a second, that's not right, but it was right. It was right, after all, and I was, ooh, I was hoping I, was, I could make a jump and salvage that, but that's fine. We went through, we went through above the clouds. Missing a jump or two? Wait, that ain't, that ain't no sweat, ain't no, ain't no beans. That, that isn't a saying at all. No one says ain't no beans. It ain't no sweat off our back. I don't, the worst part was I almost said ain't no beans off her back, which is just confusing and not, that wouldn't be pleasant at all, um, so... We're just going to forget about that, and we're going to continue onwards, because we have an owl to grab onto, uh, so we can continue onwards, make a jump, not make that jump, and continue on to, I believe this is the last door, because uh, off to the far left is just the, um, the, uh, key, that, keys and coins are very, very difficult things for me, I keep mixing them up, because, I mean, both of them let you get into your house if you're willing enough, uh, and the reason why we had to go to the area, the left side of the area, the left side of this room, first and foremost, uh, is because there's no way to get that, uh, uh, stupid, the stupid thing. You can't jump up here and grab this owl, because it's just slightly out of your way, which begs the question why they bothered to put that owl there. Um, have I been picking up coins? Um, I think there's probably coins that I need to go grab, yeah, because yeah, there's, there's a coin, and then there's a coin above us, but that's fine. Everything... Everything's fine, and everything's good, and everything's working out just great, and that was interesting. Um, uh, but yes, for, uh, for a second I was like, oh wait, I need to grab all the coins in this, because I was just, I was like, starting to kind of make like a beeline for the end of the level. Um, and I think we need to come up this way to get that topmost uh, coin. Uh, and now I suddenly understand why they put this owl here. I was so confused, I was like, why'd they bother to put two owls in this room? Like, you have to go grab that other owl to get to this one. But this owl is a safety owl. Just in case you lose your owl, you have a backup owl. And you can continuously jump up and, uh, scare the hell out of this owl, um, as evidenced by its face and the musical cues associated with, um, you grabbing the damn thing. Um, let's get over here before invincibility frames wear off, uh, otherwise that could be annoying to try and get back here. Almost as annoying as messing up this stupid little thing uh, by tapping the D-pad just a bit too early. Um, I feel like the D-pad on my controller is probably not the best suited for uh, this kind of gameplay. 
Uh, not to make excuses for myself or anything. I'm just doing bad. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna own up to that part that I'm just doing bad. But also, this D-pad definitely isn't made for as twitchy as I'm being with the stupid owl. Uh, but you also probably don't need to be ridiculously twitchy with this, because this isn't super hard. Like, you have a pretty fair amount of time uh, to be able to get yourself into um, position for this. Uh, the owl, though, is a mechanic that I enjoy. Um, just because you can make the owl go as fast as you please by holding uh, the D-pad. I guess not as fast as you please because it does have a top speed. So you can pretty much have the owl in slow owl mode. Um, and Oh, are we not going to be able to make this? Uh, ooh, I'm not sure if we'll... Yeah, here, here's what we'll do. We'll hit that and let it just knock us past here. That's human ingenuity at its finest. Just uh, You can't get through some spikes because you keep hitting it and bouncing off and your uh, invincibility frames don't last long enough to get past it. Just hit another pair of spikes. Knocking yourself the other way. Knocking you past the spikes that were previously acting as your barrier. Pro tip for just about anybody. Just about anybody can make use of that pro tip. Um, what I could make use of is playing a little bit better. Because, like, what is this? Like, the 20th time I've done this stupid thing? I mean, like, basically every attempt isn't taking that long. Um, but, yeah. Oh, damn. I feel like I was, wasn't... Uh, hmm. I guess I'm, I'm... Oh, man. That's just bad. Round two of Owl time? I like how in the first time of using the stupid Owl, I was able to make it to the key just fine, and then I was like, oh wait, I need to go get coins! And then I didn't collect the stupid key! Uh, what's wrong with my stupid brain? Um, so we'll just continue onwards. Uh, we're going to do this right this time. I'm not going to mess up the segment at all. I'm gonna do very good. And no one's going to have a bad time, because I'm gonna do it good instead of bad! What? Oh, wait, what the hell was that? That was interesting. I let go of the Owl. Because I was like, I'm just going to drop through using invincibility frames. But then I fell, hit the spikes, and then I get stuck in the owl's hitbox for a second, I guess. Um, and the owl pop popped out of me a little bit later. That was weird. I must have, like... That animation, like, of... Dr I'm, I'm actually going to test that. Let's see that. Um, uh, that was an accident. But what I want to do is I want to drop into these spikes. just to... Alright, so I drop it. And, yeah, like, the owl comes out of you. That's interesting. The, the like, dropping the owl... Uh, animation, uh, and I actually don't need to go the same way anymore, um, it's like you're still like, considered to be holding the owl and getting hit while dropping before your invincibility frames start, like, um, causes the owl to pop out of you again. That's very strange and weird, and uh, kind of neat. Um, and unfortunately, uh, oh, that almost uh, launched us into a very bad spot, uh, but luckily it did not. God, I just want to play around that, that stupid owl thing now. Because I think this might be the last time we we get a chance to play around with the owl. I know I pretty much I've been pretty much just confused with every in single instance with this owl. Because I'm like, oh, the owl's only in the uh, the colossal hole. I don't think it's in any other levels. And this is like what our like third level bumping into the owl. Um, but I honest to goodness cannot think of another instance where we will be seeing our good friend the owl again. So I think it's time to play. Let's just have a little play time with our owl friend. Um, like, do we just need a lot of, like, wind-up to, uh, be able to utilize the, um, the invincibility frames on the owl? Or are there just no invincibility frames on the owl? Now that I... Why didn't I break that the first time? Oh, my my brain is so dumb! Because, like, had I broken this our first time, like, going through, and, uh... Wario actually can't fit through there. He's too big. Um, no, no, he's just... Oh, my God. If you just leave it alone, the owl goes crazy! That's amazing! That's so good! I'm so sorry, this probably looks terrible. But this is this is very interesting to me, I'm so sorry. Um, like, do you just have to drop from a certain height to be able to get invincibility frames? Like, I, I just don't know, what's what's the deal with this? I'm gonna go ahead and break that so we can continue to play with the owl with having, without having to finagle Wario just right. Um, and also so we don't have, I don't get tempted to just continuously just lodge the owl in place and enjoy it just going insane. Cause that's crazy, like, I've never seen that before. Yeah, but it seems like either you get no invincibility frames on the drop, um, and unfortunately I don't think we're going to get enough room to be able to drop Wario. Yeah, like, he never starts flashing, which leads me to think that he doesn't get any invincibility frames on that. Um, oh my god, I just saw the recording, and I know I already started the recording a little a little earlier than I started actually, like, doing the damn playing video game thing, but this recording looks like it's probably very long, and I apologize, because I feel like the last 20 minutes of that is me being just enraptured by an owl. Rather, it's me playing badly, or it's me literally just being enraptured by 
the mechanics of an, the owl, because I don't think we're going to see the owl again. Thank you, Al. You had some wonderful contributions, and I enjoyed it very much. And oh, I'm so glad that I got all the coins, because I stopped looking at the coin count, and my heart kind of stopped when I saw the stupid coin count come up. I was like, did I get all the coins? Uh, but luckily, I did. Um, I was so enraptured by the owl, I forgot to do a double check. Um, but right here, we have the spray and rust. It's a can of rust, and you can spray it to make things rust. So, um, now there's metal walls that were previously, um, inaccessible to us. I mean, we, we, we could access the metal walls. We just, they were impassable objects. Uh, but now that they're rusted, maybe our, uh, great garlic-infused biceps have something to say about them. Um, so that's enough of this episode, and I just liked the episode's name, and I, I'm so sorry, I remember what I named this episode, I apologize, it, it was a bad one on me, I'm sorry. Um, that's enough of this episode, I'm not actually that sorry, 